Hey, what up y'all? Mr. Cruz here, the hardest worker in the room, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can split and arrange your drums in FL Studio. Before we get started on today's video, I do want to shout out BeatStars, the number one platform for producers like you and me to sell our beats. I have personally been a member of BeatStars for over three years now, and I honestly, um, I completely love it. If you're a producer and you're interested in getting your music out there, selling beats, finding artists to rap over your beats and create songs to them, and you are not on BeatStars, you're taking an L. I mean, you can argue with your mama, but you're taking an L. You are missing out on amazing opportunities to not only be able to connect and land and placements with up and coming major artists, but you're also missing out on valuable knowledge that BeatStars puts out to its members every single week. Talking about webinars on marketing, mixing, mastering, graphic design, how to network, a plethora of things that you would definitely need if you're trying to be successful in this industry. So hit the link in the description, join me over on BeatStars, make sure to use my code CRU230 and I'm gonna hook you up with your first month on BeatStars for free. All right, let's get to the video. I came from Reason Studio and and Reason Studio was very different the way that it arranged uh, its regions and there was called regions here it's called patterns but it was very very different and so coming over to FL Studio realizing that this is how most of you people are kind of you know doing your drums I'm going to show you guys how I was able to do it because one of the major conflicts that I had was going from Reason to FL and then being able to try to emulate or mimic the style and my workflow from Reason into FL. In FL, traditionally, this is probably how most of you guys are doing your drums. So I'm gonna show you how you can kind of arrange it a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. So once you have this here, um, let, let's just take a listen here real quick. All right, so obviously we have a bunch of different elements. You have a kick, 808, snare, clap, splash, open hi-hat. So what I would want to do is when I'm arranging my beat, obviously I wanna have different elements taken out and put back in at different times. So I might wanna have a, a part of the verse that doesn't have the hi-hat. Normally you would probably have to do this. You know, I'm gonna make a copy here. All right, so this one, I'm gonna make this a unique pattern and then I'm gonna go in here, 808, my hi-hat. Oh no, that's the splash. No, not that part. Um, right here, okay, there it goes. All right, I'm gonna delete that and then that's let me move this back up where it was and boom all right so now i have that one part right there that has the drum pattern without the hi-hat but there might be an instance when i want to have the hi-hat you know it can get really complicated really really quick and not only that that also is going to like make your pattern super long and it can be pretty complicated and confusing what you can do is over here you're going to click on make sure that your pattern is selected right click it and then hit split by channel and when you do that each individual element is going to get its own pattern now and the reason you would want to do that is because it's going to make it a lot easier when you're arranging your song or your beat or your track or whatever it's going to make it a lot easier for you to take certain elements out at certain parts or add certain elements in or cut something short but when you do that here uh, everything is going to be stacked on top of each other so i have my 808 and then I have my kick and then I have my clap. All right, bam. So now I have everything set out so I can, you know, shorten up my hi-hats at a certain part if I want to, or I can completely remove my kick. However, um, that is how I have my template set up automatically. So out the jump, when I fire up FL Studio, this is what my session looks like already. It already has everything tracked out. I'm gonna show you guys how you can start out doing that. So that way you don't have to worry about splitting the channels and stuff like that later if you don't feel like doing that or if you don't want to. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to the channel rack and automatically you want to route every single different instrument, every different element out to its own mixer channel because that's just gonna make it easier to mix in the end. But then once you're creating a pattern, you're gonna create a, a pattern and you're gonna label the pattern a different um, a different sound, right? So I have 808, I have kick, I have snare and whatnot. So pretty much all the things that I'm gonna use. So then, uh, I might start out, let's say I started out with my snare. So I'm gonna select snare, and then I kind of labeled all this stuff here. You can label it however you want. But let's say I didn't have anything in there. I just wanna make sure that on my piano roll, I'm selecting the same sound that I have written out for my pattern, because that's the sound that's gonna be in there. So now if I click select snare, bam, some crazy, whack snare sound uh if i want to do the same thing with clap so i got to make sure that i have clap selected and then my clap pattern is going to be there and then inside of uh, the piano roll making sure that i select clap and then i draw my notes in now 
For some of you guys, that workflow, like, ah, oh, that seems too complicated. It's going to take too much time. I get it. However, in the end, in the long run, it saves me a lot more time when it comes to arranging my track. And that's kind of just the thing. That's the gist of it is like you want to be able to save time because the more time you save, you know, the more time you have to make more beats or, you know, do something else that might be more important. Because as we all know, if you're trying to sell beats, if you're trying to sell your music, making the beats is the easy part. It's everything else that comes after that's kind of hard. So this can kind of hopefully save you some time. Well, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully it is helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy, Mr. Cruz. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah.